Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I'm going to be roasting a whole duck. I'm going to make some lovely braised red cabbage and a gravy to go with it. It's going to be gorgeous. Hello there, I'm going to be roasting a duck for this video and I thought well, we're getting near Christmas and people might be thinking something different than turkey, then why not a duck? A beautiful roasted duck, classical red cabbage to go with it, which I'm going to braise. I've got a whole array of ingredients here, pick and choose how much of this you want to do, how little of it you want to do, but it's all about this baby here, it's absolutely beautiful and I have had this. Um, for about 36 hours uncovered on a rack in my fridge to sort of get that skin dry because that's going to aid having a beautiful crispy skin. Anyway, I can't wait for this. This is going to be great. Okay then, there is quite a lot to do for this video and obviously you know, do as much of a little of this as you like but this is the onion that's going to go underneath the duck and it's going later on it's going to form the amazing gravy. So it doesn't matter how you chop these up, just hack them up into pieces like so. Same again with some celery and you could add some carrot and some leeks if you liked. Uh, I'm adding some garlic, that's a bit less than half of a bowl but I'm just going to hack that up as well, I'm not going to bother peeling it either. So once you've got that done we'll put that in a roasting tray. So we'll make sure the roasting tray you've got, you've also got a rack that will sit on top of it and that the duck will sit on top of that. That is the neck that came with the duck, I also added that to it. So this is the duck that I've had in the fridge for about a day and a half, uncovered like that on a rack. By all means, you don't have to leave it that long, but I would recommend at least overnight to really sort of dry out the skin. Let's fill the cavity with some nice aromatics. So I've gone to my garden, what have I got? I've got some rosemary and I've got some bay leaves. My time's dead now. And just scrunch up those bay leaves a little bit, get the oils coming out of them. And a sprinkle of salt inside there as well. You could stick half an orange in there, you know, you can get creative. Now this is the bit which is slightly different and if you watched my crispy roast pork belly a few weeks ago I'm using the similar technique. Rather than scoring I'm stabbing with, with a skewer hundreds and hundreds of little holes and again I took about five minutes here especially sort of the parts where the skin is the thickest there's most fat there that's where we want to encourage that fat to come out to render whilst we cook it. And a nice seasoning. By all means, you could add some spices to this, make it a rub, you know, add some five spice, you know, what, ginger, whatever you fancy. But I wanted to go quite plain and classic with this. So again, a bit of salt. I'm using sea salt there on the back side of it as well. So that is a nicely seasoned bird. I'm not going to tuck the wingtips in. One of them's broken anyway. It was a frozen duck, this, and that's how it was when I got it out. So that's going to go on the rack, but then I'm leaving that to get room temperature while I do some other things here. So selection of spices there. If you go to my website, you'll see the full recipe that I've used, but I've got some dried ginger in there, some cloves. That's a bit of allspice berry that jumped out. Go and get it. Bring that back. I've got some cinnamon barks. Some, did I say cloves? I've got cardamom pods, star anise. I can't remember what I've said now. And I'm not grinding it to a powder. I'm just breaking them up so that they will give extra flavour to this wonderful braised red cabbage. That is a little piece of muslin cloth or cheesecloth. I recommend doing that because what happens here is that effectively works as a spicy tea bag for flavouring the red cabbage but it's obviously your red cabbage isn't going to have lots of uh, undigestible bits of spice in there so and you're going to struggle watching me struggle to tie a double knot. I, I literally have no dexterity at all, but I got there in the end. Select a nice big pan. That is the red wine. That is the red wine vinegar, but you could use white wine and white wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar. That was sugar. There goes the spice and there goes some cider. And I'll leave that on the side while I quickly chop up this red cabbage. I was searching for my mandolin, my or, AKA the Japanese finger slice, and I couldn't find it, so I thought, okay, well, we'll do this with a knife. A nice big knife is preferable. Quarter it, and then remove the core, like so. Dead easy. You don't want that bit. So those are all done. And then 
also just thinking there was a bit on the outside that didn't look particularly nice you know a bit dry so that's just if you're not happy with the leaves on the outside just take them off but that whole cabbage that was about one and a half kilos approximately and just slicing the most important thing when you're slicing obviously be safe don't chop your fingers off use that technique of allowing the the knife to do the work and there's a another angle where you can see the size that I've gone I've just stuck to the same size that's what chef John tells us all the time pick a size and then stick to it so that's all the cabbage done in with the flavorings and the booze and the spicing everything get all of it in there don't waste any pop that on your stove turn it on and then put a lid on it while I do the other bits and pieces that are going to go in there so quickly I'm chopping up a red onion these are all optional things but I thought yes a little bit of onion and I thought apple would be nice so rather than chopping up the apple I, thought I just grate it I didn't bother peeling it I sort of grating till I get to the core then turning it and then grating till I get to the core and you're left with a bit of core which you throw away or give it to the dog if you've got a dog they quite like those I think and again that's I'm just putting that in a bowl and that is going to go into the pot with the cabbage sorry about the view of my backside again there it's unnecessary you can see it's I had it on a high heat beginning to bubble away I just want to push to make sure I've got all the apple down underneath the liquid level because otherwise it's going to go brown it's going to oxidize won't be as nice pop a lid on that and then turn that heat down way way low you want you want this to take at least a couple of hours to gently cook and how much you cook it is entirely up to you. You taste it if you're happy with it. Some people like theirs a bit firmer. And there goes the duck upside down. So the back side is up. 45 minutes in a nice hot oven. And yes, I have an oven at last. I have an oven. Oh, what a relief. Anyway, so I'm flipping the duck over. And you notice I didn't truss it earlier because I wanted it to be like that. I wanted it all to be open so you get that even cooking. And the duck comes out that's around the around the legs where the... Oh, that's one hour later on a lower temperature and yes it looks quite nice doesn't it we can't lie that looks absolutely fantastic so lots of the fat and the juices have fallen into the tray below which we're not going to waste and i thought well let's not also waste those lovely herbs that we had inside it that's going to help the gravy i'm just going to cover it loosely with some foil I don't want to cover it too tightly. I don't want it to sweat and lose that crispy skin. But I also, you know, I don't want it to cool down too much. But you don't have to stress about having the duck hot. It needs time to rest. I would say at least half an hour. And there I am with the autofocus struggling, draining off the excess duck fat. I'm not going to show you how I made the roast potatoes in this one, but I will share a link. But I did use that duck fat there for those roast potatoes. And all those caramelised bits there, don't waste those get them all in there and of course you could have just left that tray as it was on the stove I don't know why I didn't do that I put it in a pan um, I put a bit of flour in there that is going to add some thickness to this gravy that's the herbs that went in that's after about two minutes I'm using white wine but again beer cider red wine port use what you want and then let that simmer for a while burn off the alcohol in goes the chicken stock. I'll share a link to that video as well, how to make your own chicken stock, but you can always use a shop bought one. That was some balsamic vinegar. That was a little bit of red currant jelly. So that adds a tad, a sweet and sour note to this wonderful, wonderful gravy. Have a taste. Need a bit of seasoning? Add some seasoning. Put some salt and pepper in it. Have another taste. Are you happy? I think we're happy. Straining time. So got a fine mesh sieve or chinois and I'm just taking my time there we want all those bits out because they've put so much flavor into this gravy but we don't want them in the finished one and look at that bubbling away reducing down and you stop when the consistency is how you like it this duck has had time and listen still crispy skin absolutely fantastic but you're thinking is it a bit dry but it's had half an hour resting. Is it dry? Well, you'll, you'll see in a minute. It's so moist and juicy still. The fat rendering through it does that. That's why I love roasting a whole duck. I think it's absolutely made for this. And for me, far superior to a turkey. But it's a personal choice. You can see how juicy and moist it is. 
So don't worry about wasting any bits like the wings there. There's hardly any meat on them, but you can use those for stock and other gravies in the future. So don't waste any of that, including the carcass. But so once we've taken the legs off, let's get the breasts off. You just sort of go in the middle, along the backbone, but ever so slightly to one side, and then you sort of follow the natural shape of the rib cage, cutting around, just let the bone, let the knife rest against the bone and it just finds its way through. And there we go, we have removed a breast. There you go, just to show you, that's the breast. Let's do the other one. So again, you just sort of, literally just a couple of millimeters the other side. Just let the rib cage guide you where to go. Change your angle if you like. Obviously you weren't getting a very good look at that one, so I've gone around the other side of the board. So you can get a better view of how I'm doing that. So there we go, we've got the two breasts removed. Now, they're still warm, they're lovely. You know, we're ready to serve this now. So I'm just gonna put those on a plate at the side for the moment. And I thought I'd just show you, I'm sure you know how to do this, but let's cut, let's separate the drumstick from the thigh. You just wiggle your knife, find it in the middle, and it'll go through there. There it is. I made a bit of a mess, actually, but we still did it. Let's put that back together. Whoa. And all those little bits on the board, that's the cook's privilege. You polish those off yourself. So let's serve this up. The cabbage had a couple of hours. Still nice and warm. Those roast potatoes, so in the top corner now, you'll see a link to how I do my duck fat roasted potatoes. Absolutely stunning beautiful gravy in a boat and I recommend you just you know serve this on the table like that It'll make your life a bit easier don't worry about plating it up but I just thought let's carve the breast I like to carve duck not too thin I find it sort of it cools down and goes dry quite quickly so about an inch in thickness those pieces there if you want to arrange it and make it look a bit more fancy on a plate you might want to consider doing it like this that looks quite nice doesn't it lashings of gravy. Anyway, over to me for the tasting. As usual, sort of bomb site behind me, but uh, this looks rather nice, doesn't it? So here, we have got here a whole roasted duck. Let's have a go at the very end bit where you'd imagine it would be the driest. And it just isn't. For those people that think obviously duck breast when you cook it on its own, it should be pink, but when you roast it whole, it just absorbs the, the, the fat passes through it and it renders and it just is really juicy and then a bit of the drumstick we'll have a bit of the red cabbage with it it's tender it's absolutely lovely let's try this red cabbage on its own yeah it's got a really nice balance of sweet and sour and savory this is this is a great dinner so if you're thinking of something for Christmas Day perhaps you want to roast the duck on the table put everything inside dishes so you've got to place it up mm. and the gravy oh so nice anyway mm. thank you very much for watching I hope you like this and um, yeah catch you in the next one come real soon bye budget.
Thank you.